mental bandwidth depletion. In a nutshell, mental bandwidth depletion is a stage where uh, you are faced with a lot of external challenges and choices. Now, the Momentum UNISA Household Financial Wellness Index unpacks behaviors to help you reflect on and successfully navigate the economic plus financial factors in your personal, family and business spheres. Momentum is celebrating its 10-year research partnership with UNISA by showcasing that uh, hashtag success is a science and to share more on where your mental capacity is between making right choices which may have a long-term impact on your financial success. And we're now joined by Charlotte Nsubuga Mugaza, the head of Momentum Brand Marketing. Charlotte, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us and a warm welcome to Morning Live. Thank you so much for having me and uh, thank you to the viewers for also receiving me in their homes today. Let's start with uh, why it was so important for Momentum to show, uh, rather to share the insights with South Africans. It's important for us to share the insights with South Africans because for 10 years we've been going into your household, and this particular year we went into 2,500 households to test the financial wellness and the health of ordinary South Africans. Why? Because we understand how you use 10 rand versus how I use 10 rand is very different. And the way we use those um, that chain rand can actually either accelerate our journey to financial success or decelerate it. So we want South Africans to understand these insights so that they can look at the behaviors around money. Because let's face it, the bonus is not always going to come. The salary increase is not always going to come. And the side hustle may not always be there. But if we teach South Africans how to work with the money that they have, then they're going to be able to basically do better with their money and perhaps start looking at the long-term impact goals that they have, whether it's educating their children and having a, um, aspiring for more, whether it's kids, bits, Harvard. We want people to be able to make sure that their livelihoods and their aspirations are actually made. But it starts with small changes in their behavior. So if they do not know, they cannot do better. Yeah, and what what does the latest research results say about the state of South African households in 2020 when it comes to mental bandwidth? Perhaps you can start by telling us what mental bandwidth is. Sure. So I must admit I never knew this term even existed, but the research insights basically said mental bandwidth is where you are overwhelmed and you're not able to make or discern between seemingly right financial choices for your household. And when I say seemingly, sometimes you, you can discern between a bad idea and a good idea. But if you're overwhelmed, you're juggling Zoom calls, homeschooling, trying to make sure that you meet your deliverables at work, sometimes you, can, you don't have the mental capacity or ability to discern. So that's really what mental bandwidth depletion is. And COVID-19 has not helped us this year. It is also an external factor that is weighing on our minds. We've lost a lot of people along the way. And it's starting to show in terms of the financial decisions we're making in our household. So that's what financial or mental balance depletion actually means. In terms of what that means for your long-term financial goal setting, it means that you are reactive. You can't think of long-term goals more than two to 10 years from now. You're eating hand-to-mouth, but you're also thinking hand-to-mouth. So therefore, um, you know, you're not sustainable in your actions, and it has an impact on your mentality, it has an impact on your money, and it has an impact on your household. Right. And how can individuals and households then start getting out of a mentally depleted state and start working towards financial success? question and I want to own this as a corporate. Sometimes we um, almost throw information down the gauntlet and it's just too much. If South Africans are overwhelmed by providing advice in a continuous fashion, we've got to take ownership as a corporate, one of the many corporates and say, how do we create this information and turn it into advice, into tips, into hacks that are practical and accessible, but most importantly, that are snackable and in bite-sized chunks so that the people of South Africa that, that are mentally depleted in terms of their ability to make decisions are able to take this information in bite-sized chunks. But on a practical level, we saw that 14% of the households that we actually interviewed are creating side hustles as an additional income. And of those people that were creating side hustles, 22% of them were either selling baked goods at work. 
And these are professionals as well. So it's not just for the lower income, lower income, middle income who are selling at baked goods um, at work. That was 22%. 11% of them got into the resellers market, whether it's reselling jewelry, reselling perfume as an additional income. And then 6% said, when I get my bonus, if I've got additional capital, I'm going to start a nail bar or gardening services. So I really want to encourage South Africans to say nothing or no small feat should ever be looked down upon because it can help you to create that extra space savings pool or emergency fund that you need for your short-term goals as well as your long-term goals. So I'll say get practical and consider side hustles and encourage that mentality with your children. Another small thing that we saw in terms of being practical is that those families that actually put financial goals on their fridges got their children to get involved in terms of saving for their short and long-term goals. So it wasn't only left to, let's say, in, in our single-headed households by the, the mother figure, or in particular cases where there were two partners in our household, it wasn't left to two or one person to make the decisions. Every single person that lived in that house, whether they earned an income or not, started to get involved in moving, let's say, um, uh, the little fridge magnet as and when they met particular milestones. So I would say, make your milestones attainable and accessible. And this theme of saving for a rainy day, we need to make sure that we don't stipulate 30%. Not every South African can save 30% of their salary, their bonus, their income, and even achieve 30% out of their small business. So I'm saying make your goals accessible for your household and stop comparing yourself to your neighbor. Understand the value of 10 rand for you versus 10 rand for your neighbor may be different. But I'll say save for uh, a rainy day and make sure that if you, you uh, partner with an accountability partner, whether that person lives in your home or whether that's a financial advisor, make sure that you improve your money game and fix by making sure that you actually either improve your financial literacy levels or partner with somebody who is better at money than you. And you need to make sure that you actually you actually trust that person because if you don't have trust when it comes to money, you start to make poor decisions because remember, you would you, both of you could perhaps maybe even be mentally uh, depleted in terms of just being overwhelmed with all the external factors and also what's happening in your own home. Fair enough. Fair enough, Sharon. And this is the 10th year doing the Insights Report with UNISA, isn't it? And uh, this year uh, you introduced SMMEs as part of the research. What led to that inclusion? Sure. You know what? I mean, COVID has really hit this country when it comes to our GDP. Our financial you know, outlook at times was just looking quite you know, down. And we said, what is our contribution in terms of creating a more positive conversation that is forward-looking for the country, for our household, for you and me? And we said, it's definitely the SME market. We understand the power of small businesses in this country and how it can actually almost help the country pivot quickly, especially within the pandemic. It's not leaving us immediately. So we said, what's practical now is anybody can start a side hustle. Anybody can get into small business with the right advice, with the right tools, with the right, right partners and with the, uh, and with the right knowledge. So we basically I did research and we said, if you are one of the 2,500 households that we interviewed, what is holding you back from starting your side hustle? And we said, we, it's called your, um, your um, economic uh, potential. There are some households that are seriously financially distressed and, and, and destabilized because of COVID. COVID, maybe your niece, your nephew, your own daughter or son has lost their job. So we then said, how do we then um, not necessarily look after their mental health? Because there is a difference between your mental health and mental bandwidth depletion. But we then said, how do we look at things like self-esteem? Because those things start to erode, especially with the youth, their potential or ability to consider, to innovate in and around these circumstances. And we said, small business basically becomes that that headline that has a lot of potential and you don't necessarily need a degree to start a small business. So we said, let the insights surface. Um, where are South Africans in terms of their mentality as it comes to small business? What's holding them back in the emotional layer, in the financial layer, and in any other layer? And then how can we uh, package these insights in practical, snackable formats on our website so that small businesses or people who are keen to start a small business know where to start? Because that was also something that was holding people back beyond self-esteem is I do not know where to start or I'm overwhelmed with too much information on the in internet. I wish I could go to a single credible source that I could continuously follow and up my money game.
Even if they do know where to start, and the problem is how do they access finance? Uh, thank you so much for opening our eyes in terms of how we could navigate our way from this mental depletion uh, state. Thank you so much, uh, Charlotte, once again. Thank you so much. We just spoke to Charlotte Nzubuga Mugasa, the head of Momentum Brand Marketing on building blogs to tap into as you navigate your journey to success. All right, let's now take a quick break and...